What we're about to uh, witness is the uh, configuration of a two-node HSAP cluster. Uh, you can just see there I've just done a grep of the uh, ETC host file to display all the IP addresses and uh, interfaces that I'm going to use during this operation. Config IF is um, just a simple script uh, that I've knocked together to assign the relevant IP addresses to uh, to the interfaces and I'm just uh, now repeating that operation on, on Waldorf. We'll now create an enhanced concurrent volume group for the uh, non-IP non -IP disk heartbeat network. And now we're actually ready to start the uh, configuration of the cluster. Okay, so we're going to actually see cluster configuration now using two methods. Uh, the first one is what we generally refer to as the wizard. So sort of build the cluster in about 90 seconds or so with the answer to five simple questions. Um, all you do is supply the address to uh, one of the boot addresses to the takeover node. The application starts dot scripts and an IP address, which is um, uh, an A list address uh, for the application. Um, is this any good? And probably the answer is yes and no. Uh, probably more no than yes. Um, it's very good if you want to just build uh, a very simple cluster um, in the sort of quickest amount of time. Uh, problem is, there's kind of two issues really. One is it uses a standard configuration. So more often than not, you're going to have to go back into the extended configuration panels and change and change the attributes and, and the behavior. Um, and I think secondly it uses a whole bunch of discovery mechanisms um, which you'll probably find a lot of the time just simply don't work um, so we're just going to show you this process to uh, to demonstrate how it can be done and then we'll, uh, we're we going to step out blow the cluster away and start again from the extended configuration and really bring you through how it should be done That's completed now, so see our top info will list the configuration. So there's our cluster. And and in this case the wizard actually just sync it to the other node. So all would effectively have to be done now is just you start the cluster. And there you go, you've got high availability. So this is now the extended path, so we jumped into uh, uh extended topology and we're just gonna basically basically work our way down the list. So the first thing to do is is add the name of the cluster. And then we need to add the nodes. Communication path can be any one of the boot addresses. Uh, typically, I, I just tend to pick the first one. Uh, skip sites because that's just for XD and then the networks so we need to add two networks one for our IP network standard Ethernet and then one for our disk can't be network or for our non IP network and this just creates a network definition so when, once you create the uh, definition you've got to uh, add in your interfaces for for your IP network and your devices for your non IP and we're gonna we're gonna straight uh, again straight away from from using discovery So there's four interfaces to add, uh, the two boot addresses on on both nodes and it's very easy, you can just uh, select them, F4 select them from, from UTC host file.
Once the disk can't be network completed. And then finally we're going to add the persistent node um, label so we'll start that on Waldorf. And these are very useful for monitoring and for, for administrative purposes. Again they're an IP alias assigned to any one of the boot adapters which HA will strive to keep highly available for you. Now we're into the resource, the application configuration. So we'll start by adding an application server, which is just the uh, start and stop uh, path definitions. Now for the service address, so again this is uh, by default an IP alias and it's the address that uh, we'll use uh, per application so I, uh, that our clients connect to. Uh, note here that the boot addresses are, are typically I would always recommend using private addresses they're just used for the um, uh, uh, cluster heart beating so um, um, without it uh, HA can't effectively uh, uh, diagnose uh, network node and NIC failures Now we just added now we just added the resource group and, and, and the policies so how to start, fall over and fall back, and then we just basically add in the application server, the service address, and the volume group definitions. Now notice that we get an error when we try to add the volume group, it's because uh, discovery hasn't run. That's not an issue, you can just enter the volume group manually. And that's the process completed, so we can see our top info to list configuration. And then when we're happy, we can just simply sync the cluster, which we do. I think the easiest way to do that is just simply via CODAIR. What happens now is uh, HA runs a CO verify sanity checking process on the ODM. And when that's complete, uh, uh, the configuration is copied to all the nodes in the cluster. Once verification is successfully completed, you're then ready to start the cluster. And that's almost complete. So hopefully you found um, that extremely useful. So we've seen cluster configuration both from the from a simple element and from a more complex extended element. Thank you very much.